Hey guys, it's JT, and I'm here with another, and I'm here with another military comparison reaction video. So this next one I'm going to be reacting to is Iran versus Saudi Arabia. Who would win? Military comparison. Now, as usual, I will leave the link to the to the original video down in the description down below, so you guys can go check it out if you want. And uh, yeah, let's get this video started. Three, two, one. Play. This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. The first thousand people to sign up using the link in the description will get their first two months free. In October 2011, U.S. intelligence operatives uncovered an Iranian plot to kill the Saudi ambassador to the United States. Oh and just months God. prior, a Saudi diplomat working in the Saudi Arabian consulate in Karachi, Pakistan, was shot and killed by gunmen on motorcycles, later discovered to have direct ties to Iran's Revolutionary Guard. Since then, Tensions between the two Gulf states have been steadily heating up, most recently boiling over into a proxy war in Yemen, with both sides backing opposite powers. With many fearing all-out war is on the horizon, who would be in the best position to win? That's what we'll explore today, in this episode of the Infographic Show, Saudi Arabia versus Iran. Iran is ranked as the world's 13th most powerful military, while Saudi Arabia lags far behind at number 26. The first and most mm. obvious advantage Iran holds over Saudi Arabia is manpower. A With a population of 82 million, Iran has a potential manpower pool of 47 million, with 1.4 million youths reaching military age every year. Saudi Arabia, by comparison, is far less populated, with a total population of 28.5 million and a total potential manpower pool of 15.3 million and 510,000 youths reaching military age every year. Currently, Iran has 534,000 active duty personnel in its military, with 400,000 reservists. Saudi Arabia's military only numbers at 231,000, with a meager 25,000 reservists. Wow. The one area where Saudi Arabia boasts a clear advantage, however, is in its defense budget, with a total budget of $69.4 billion versus Iran's $8 billion. This disparity Jesus. in budgets means Saudi Arabia can bring more modern weapons to bear, as we'll see later. However, a long and protracted war would clearly favor Iran with its much larger manpower pool. Saudi Arabia holds another decisive advantage in the air, with a total of 844 combat aircraft versus mm. Iran's 505. Saudi Arabia fields 203 fighter interceptors versus Iran's 150 and 284 attack aircraft versus Iran's 158. Oh, Saudi wow. Arabia's planes are on the whole far more capable and modern than Iran's. Ah, this with the thing of is very... combat fleet made up of European Typhoon fighters and American F-15 variants. Iran, on the other hand, is equipped with 44 American F-14 Tomcats delivered to Iran just before its revolution and ties to the U.S. were cut off. Ah. While still a capable aircraft, Iranian F-14s are equipped with nearly four decade-old electronics, and it is anyone's guess as to their current readiness considering that Iran has had no access to American-made spare parts. To supplement its air force, Iran also fields MiG-29s, although with no new shipments from Russia, it has been forced to slowly cannibalize its own aircraft to keep others operational, and every year, the number available for combat shrinks. The rest of the Iranian inventory is made up of antiquated American F-4s and F-5s, again purchased prior to the revolution, and a handful of Sukhoi Su-24s and Su-25s. In recent years, Iran has made an attempt at developing homegrown fighter aircraft, touting in 2013 that they had developed a fifth-generation fighter capable of competing with the U.S.'s F-35. Ah, However, the released footage of the so-called fifth-gen fighter was quickly debunked by engineers worldwide as it sported decisively non-stealthy features. Ultimately, yeah, it was revealed me. to be a hoax. On the ground, Iran is armed with 1,650 main battle tanks versus Saudi Arabia's 1,142. Iran chiefly fields the Russian-made T-72 and T-54 and 300 American M-60 patents. Saudi Arabia is equipped with the M-1 Abrams and also fields a sizable amount of M-60 patents. While outnumbering Saudi Arabia, the T-72 is simply not a match for the M-1 Abrams and its modern upgrade packages. With superior sensors and electronics, Saudi Arabia's M-1s would decimate Iran's T-72s and the hopelessly antiquated T-54s and M-60s. Yet as the war in Yemen and its tank casualties has shown, Saudi Arabia's M-1s suffer from one critical vulnerability. They are not equipped with the depleted uranium armor that America's own Abrams sport. While this Jeez. makes them lighter and less fuel consumptive, it also significantly reduces their durability. If Iran carefully chose the battlefield, 
sticking to daytime engagements and the flat deserts of eastern Saudi Arabia, Iran's superior numbers would overwhelm Saudi tanks. However, wow. with a superior air force, it's likely Saudi Arabia would dictate the order of battle, and if it chose to engage at nighttime, its tanks could use superior sensors and targeting technology to level the playing field against Iran's numbers. In 2016, Iran did announce that it was mass-producing the indigenously produced Kara main battle tank, boasting that it was as capable as Russia's T-90 and could even exceed it in unspecified areas. World media has been extremely skeptical of the claims, given both Iran's previous lies about its fifth-generation fighter program and the fact that the Kara seems to be a near copy of the Russian T-90. Further doubts are compounded by the isolationism of Iranian defense Russia. industry, which lacks materials and technical expertise what are you doing to create with the cutting edge electronics and defense <sighs> systems critical to a modern tank. The general consensus being that in all likelihood, the Kara is a reskinned T-90 variant with none of the critical internal electronics of the original. Whatever the reality ends up being, Iran has begun to field these tanks in number, and perhaps the more important point is that Iran maintains a robust arms industry, while Saudi Arabia relies exclusively on imported weapons. Tanks are, however, only half of the ground war, and as proven by Russia's staggering losses in the Chechen conflict, are nearly useless in urban combat without infantry support. While Iran fields a larger infantry force, it is only equipped with 2,215 armored fighting vehicles. Saudi Arabia, meanwhile, has fully integrated AFVs into its infantry forces, with 5,475 AFVs giving its infantry far greater mobility and protection. Mm. Such a disparity nice. in numbers means that in a war, Saudi Arabia would be far more maneuverable, and any gains made by Iran's tanks would be slowed due to their necessity of not outpacing its mostly on-foot infantry support. Yeah. If it's outmatched in mobility and quality of its armored forces, the one crushing advantage Iran sports over Saudi Arabia is in sheer numbers of artillery. With 440 self-propelled artillery, 2,188 towed artillery, and 1,533 rocket artillery pieces, Iran absolutely dwarfs Saudi Arabia's fire support capabilities, which fields 524 self-propelled artillery, 432 towed artillery, and 322 rocket artillery. Iran's focus on fire support platforms is not unusual for nations in its position. North Korea, another isolated and technologically outclassed nation, oh, also invests heavily into fire support platforms for the simple reason that artillery traditionally needs very little technology to be effective. A withering barrage of 100-pound shells filled with 23 pounds of high explosive will keep even the most technologically advanced foe at bay. I got one thing to say to North Korea in that part. Neutralize the Boom. Threat. Iran and Saudi yeah. Arabia face each other from opposite sides of the Persian Gulf. However, the waterway is far more strategically important to Iran than Saudi Arabia, who, in case of conflict, can switch import-export operations to its Red Sea ports, safely out of range of Iranian air or naval craft. Oh. Long hounded by the U.S., however, Iran has invested far more into its navy with one single goal, shutting down the flow of oil through the Persian Gulf. With 20% of global oil exports steaming across these waters, Iran is equipped with a total of 398 naval assets versus Saudi Arabia's 55. Iran is equipped with five frigates versus Saudi Arabia's seven, but sports ten mine warfare ships versus Saudi Arabia's three, specifically to mine and shut down oil shipping in the Gulf. Iran also boasts 203 small patrol craft armed with mostly Chinese anti-ship missiles and 50 caliber machine guns, while Saudi Arabia only has 11. Perhaps Iran's biggest trump card, however, is its fleet of 33 submarines, most of which are midget subs with crews of 2 to 6. Oh, While not gosh. a serious threat to a modern navy, Iran's midget subs could potentially decimate the fleet of oil tankers that habitually navigate the Persian Gulf, posing a significant strategic challenge in the event of war. Saudi Arabia has long enjoyed the benefit of powerful allies such as the United States, and with greater wealth, overwhelmingly sports more technologically advanced equipment. Yet despite being burdened by crippling UN sanctions, Iran still fields a formidable military, and perhaps more importantly, a homegrown arms industry. While any war between the two nations would immediately see the inclusion of the United States, yeah, and likely NATO. the bulk of NATO on the Saudi side, a one-on-one -on -one conflict would ultimately likely lead to a limited Iranian victory. If military stuff fascinates you, but not enough to actually join the military, you might want to give learning how to animate military badges a try. 
Icon Animation in After Effects is a super fun and easy class that will teach you the basics of animation in After Effects and give you an idea on how to animate cool military badges. I'll try and look into that. This is currently being taken by more than 100 students, and it's just one of the 20,000 classes offered by Skillshare, an online learning community with classes in editing, graphic design, animation, and more. The first 1,000 people to visit Skillshare.com slash Infographics33 or to click the link in the description, will receive premium membership for two months completely free. Mm. Join Skillshare and start learning today. So, how do you think the two militaries would perform in a new Gulf War? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called What Happened to the Man Who Put His Head Inside a Particle Accelerator. Oh, Thanks for God. watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time. I already took care of that, pal, so... <laughs> I'm always staying subscribed to you. <laughs> Anyway. But, uh, yeah. It looks like in this video, Iran could, uh, outmember Saudi Arabia at first, but, uh, and yes, Iran maybe have help from, uh, from Russia and, uh, North Korea, but then again, Saudi Arabia has the U.S.'s help, as well as NATO, so... <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, I vote that Saudi Arabia wins this military comparison because, you know, the, it's just an easy answer. The good guys always have to win, and they always do, and they always will. <laughs> and it just makes sense anyway. All right, if you enjoyed my reaction, hit the like, subscribe, and notification button down below. I will also leave a link to the infographic show channel in, into the uh, description down below so you guys can go check them out and uh, subscribe to them if you want. And I'll see you all in the next video. 1,000 subscribers. Peace!